Ciao! I'm Chef Slavoj and I'm here to introduce you to my Italian kitchen. Today, capitalism is clearly entering its final crisis. This is not a leftist nightmare or dream. Even progressive corporate figures like Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates know it. But there is no organized left to offer a viable alternative or a vision of life after capitalism. So all we get is just a protracted decay. The great German thinker Walter Benjamin said back in 1930s that every rise of fascism is the sign of a failed revolution. And I think this holds today more than ever. The radical left proved its inability in Greece where the Syriza government ended up as the most faithful enabler of the austerity politics. The latest election results in Italy as well as the fragile coalition in Germany also demonstrate that the moderate social democratic left is just gradually flattening. Now a new opposition is replacing the traditional polarity of moderate left and moderate right. It's the opposition between liberal establishment and the rightist populism as a reaction to it. The explosive rise of populism all around Europe simply fills in the void of the left's failure. We are thus caught in a vicious cycle, which I think can be broken only by a new reinvented left. And unfortunately, we all know what lies ahead if this new left will not appear. A new authoritarian capitalism, which is now spreading all around the globe, from Trump to Putin, from Turkey to China. Our social muscles are already acting. There are protests all around. But will they reinvigorate our nerves, a new leftist vision, or will they remain just a blind, contractive movement? Mm, buonissimo. And our thanks to the Divertimenti Cookery School at the Brompton Road for the use of their beautiful kitchen. Chef uh, Savoy didn't uh, do the washing up, but he is with us here now. Welcome back to Thank the studio. You. Michael, listening to that take, though, I, I still didn't get an explanation, I don't know whether you did, of why it's the mainstream left that's taken a hit since the financial crash rather than the mainstream right. Well, actually, I think on the whole, both have taken a hit. Mm. I mean, Mrs Merkel did pretty badly in the last... A German election, uh, Macron re replaced uh, a right-wing um, party in France. That, that, that party has virtually disappeared for the time being. Uh, in Italy, the mainstream... Well, right, he's actually but, replaced more... I mean, the socialists in France and the presidential thing took a much bigger hit than the Gaullists. But, but both sides are taking a hit. That's my point. In Spain as well, it's true that the right is in power at the moment, but there are now four main parties where, they, where there used to be two. Now, uh, I do think that it was right to say that there is um, a division between the populist right and the elites, uh, the liberal elites. And that is because the liberal elites are distant, they are haughty, they are detached from real people's issues. And I think one of the main factors that there has been, which has illustrated that aloofness, uh, has been the immigration policy, where I think really uh, the left has had uh, nothing to say. But uh, immigration has been, in the case of Mrs Merkel, 
also extraordinarily damaging to the right. So I think what we're seeing, and we've mentioned this before, what we're seeing is a breakdown of the old order in, but which, in which traditional parties of left and right have suffered. It's certainly true that mainstream left and right have suffered, but the mainstream social democratic parties have suffered much more. Mm -hmm. We have a conservative prime minister in Britain. Mm -hmm. We have a centrist president in France. We're going to have a centre-left, centre-right mm -hmm. uh, chancellor in Germany. Mm -hmm. None of the above applies to the social democrats. Why? I mean, it is fascinating. I can remember, um, you know, around the time, not long after the crash, uh, and a, being at a party of European Socialists event, and I think there was a sense amongst my sister <laughs> parties that this was going to be the great the moment. Come. This was going to be a great moment, and it didn't work out like that. And if you look at France, the our sister party vote in France is down to six percent. In Holland, mm -hmm. it's six percent. I think for the SPD in Germany, it's sixteen percent at the moment. In the latest polls, poll. they got about why, twenty in the election. Why is that happening? I think you know it's a combination of things. I think that actually, uh, you know, the it is about elites. I think. There's an anti-elitism coming from the far right, actually, and actually some of the more far left parties that have emerged uh, across Europe. But again, I think it's also about us, you know, my, my sister parties not being able to provide the answers of how do we deal with globalisation, how do we deal with immigration, how do we deal with the fact that there have been changes in terms about class identity as well. And for all those reasons and, and many more, okay. um, we haven't. Uh, reaped, if that's the right word, the benefit of a major collapse that was but, the responsibility of the banks. But, uh, Savoy, if, as you say, the Social Democrats have failed and the neo-Marxist left has failed, you give an example of mm. that, is Greece, exactly who's going to reinvent the left? First, I'm not saying it will necessarily happen. Maybe it will not. But again, as I said in the short film. Uh, the problem for me is that if nothing happens, we are caught in a very sad, deadly cycle where we are all moving towards this. And this is the saddest phenomenon today, this gradual rise of new... In what way is Britain moving towards that? No, Britain is even well, not so said, bad well, you here. Said, well, I you, think countries... you said we're all moving. Britain's not. France is not. France is a government renowned for its moderation. In Europe, we still hold it somehow, but if you look all around the but world... But it's the European social Trump democracies Putin, we're talking about. China and so on. But for the first time, democracy, as we like it so, in Europe, is losing. So you, you say that, and that's the dire consequence, but you can't tell us who's going to reinvent the left. You know, uh, now, it will sound strange for some kind of a left that I am, but I claim miracles do happen. By miracles, I mean this. Who would have thought, for example, in the United States that something like, uh, something, uh, like Bernie Sanders could have happened? He lost. It happened. He lost, but a movement he lost. remained. He got it, because what we should mention is in what sense what you, Michael, mentioned. Some kind of a strange class struggle is coming back. I think the big event in the United States was the split between Steve Bannon and Trump. Steve Bannon was a kind of a... Right, but that's on the right. I'm trying to get to the bottom of this widespread retreat of social democracy, because let's not forget Social democracy was at the heart of rebuilding post-war Europe. Yeah, Social democratic that parties over. in Scandinavia. Right, yeah, that's, that's fine. The problem. But what I don't understand, if, if in your view 50 shades of left have failed, why would the 51st shade work? And can I just say to you, no, Bernie, no, Bernie, I, Bernie I can Sanders, give you an answer. Bernie Sanders was not reinventing the left. Bernie Sanders was introducing the left for the first time into America. Yeah, but there was, was nothing an new. Of, miracle there was nothing now, new about this leftism. And I agree here with you, with both of you, that uh, the problem, not only of the mainstream liberal centre, but even of the left, was that it was in a hidden way elitist, avoided certain issues and so on. And that was the scandal that the but, right but, stole the popular appeal to a last extent. But yes. sorry, just to briefly answer your central question. I think that, I think that the issues that we are facing today, and you can even not call what I'm expecting to happen a left, we have ecological problems, which right. need some kind but of a you, white... But do, you, but do you understand that actually, not just in this country, but across Europe, working class people who traditionally would vote for the sister parties of the Labour Party in the UK, 
moved away from that to more, many of them moving to right-wing parties because they felt, for one reason or another, that uh, Europe's inability to get on hold of immigration, some of the things we've seen in terms of the refugee crisis, you know, writ large when, you know, Merkel announced uh, in terms of people... But, 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 that, but that, has, has, that, that has had enormous impact. Right. And but the problem is, is that the centre-left right, has We know the analysis. Is. Where do we go from here? Everyone's well, very I good at analysing. Well, I'd I put sense. this to you, Caroline. Yes. The one social, social democratic party, at least from a social democratic tradition in Europe, mm. that is still doing well is Labour, is the British Labour yeah. Party. And that's the one that has moved most to the left. Yes, you're right. And so, I think, but I think part of that is... Isn't that a solution? But I think part of it is, is that what the traditional voters who voted Labour do like about what Labour is saying is about tackling some of the things we didn't tackle before, about globalisation, about how we have to have a rebalanced economy, about talking about um, how we address some of the issues about the fact that we have had, since the crash, people's wages kept down, their sure. rights undermined. There is appeal right. there. But the other part of that is we also have to right. talk to the people's concerns about immigration. Yeah, those same course, people I have those views. That, but hold on. The French socialists didn't move to the left. They did under Hollande to begin, but they moved back to the centre. They almost got wiped out. The German social democrats didn't move to the left. They got their worst vote since the 1940s. The Italian social democrats didn't move to the left. Indeed, they moved in a Blair uh, uh, um, direction. They were marginalised in the elections that have just taken place. So, uh, you know, if you're a Corbynista, the, the lesson is quite clear, and it's well, not your lesson. The, um, I, the contrast between Britain and the rest of the European Union would suggest to me that in the European Union we have had a trade-off between parties of the left uh, that used to satisfy the working class vote, mm -hmm. as you say, the working class vote has now moved to the extreme right. Uh, some of it moved to the right in this country as well in the case of UKIP. Mm. But after Brexit, the, the question of immigration appeared to be answered. I'm not saying that it was answered, but it appeared to be answered because Brexit was the solution to it. And what happened? Suddenly the right-wing party disappeared altogether. Now, I also take the view that Labour is not going to win the next election because it has moved too far to the left. But just to make one other point, you say where is the revival of the left going to come from? The revival of anything can come from leadership. Mm. If you have an outstanding personality, I mean, Macron to an extent has done this. You know, he's emerged from nowhere and taken over France. Uh, you know, from Mrs. the centre. From the centre. Mrs. Merkel's day has, uh, has, has come and gone. But there is an astonishing lack of charismatic leadership potential in Europe. By contrast, Trump, whatever you think of him, is a charismatic leader who's come from nowhere and taken over. One last thought from you. Yes. Uh, uh, I think that the problem is very deep here, and I, I agree with both of you. There are central issues of immigration where, in the politically correct left, you are simply prohibited to mention them. I know this from my book Against the Double Blackmail, where, with all the sympathy for the suffering of the immigrants, I try to approach this and say, if you want to solve this problem, first, we should not just play this humanitarian game, do we have open heart and accept them, but let's see, let's confront real problem of cultural differences and so on, and point two, let's act preemptively, like we are tolerating the civil war in Yemen uh, and so on, and this is the breeding ground for new wave of immigrants and so on and so on. So if this doesn't change, it will happen. Point two, uh, what I'm saying is that the left, uh, the majority of the left, like the European social, traditional social democrats, people feel it. Do, they really don't have a consistent, clear vision of what to do. And it's a big problem. It's not an easy problem. What to do? Uh, obviously, the old state socialism will not work. These radical leftist dreams of, you know, some direct democracy, local councils. No, if anything, I'm here a kind of a state philosopher. We will need to cope with ecology and so on. Large form of uh, international coordination to solve these problems and so on and so on. I'm not talking about the continuation of the same left, but the reason I have a minimal hope is that sooner or later, 
these problems are pressing on us. Ecology, immigration, okay. international order, financial chaos, even problems like biogenetics. Who will control it? Are we aware what is happening in China, where the state already has plans to coordinate uh, the biogenetics of the population to All keep right. them quiet, patriotic. Okay. The only answer to this is from what I call left. Nothing to right. do with the old communist left or whatever, but a kind of a organized confronting this problem and just repeating, my God, yeah. what Bill Gates and they are right. saying. We, Capitalism alone there. can work. On Chinese biological policy, we're going to have to end it. We haven't got time to do into that. Yeah, but Thank it's you. a crucial event. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it is, but I'm still trying to work out the future of European social democracy. Anyway, we, we social democracy finished, eh? as we know it. All right. Something have to get. Okay. You know okay. No. 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 That's it. No. 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 Thank you. British Labour Party. Mm. Yeah. I no. Like no. We it, do. We do know that. What they do if we come to and power? So we have to move on. I we have other. Problem. We have other guests. So we need I'm to sorry. move on. Okay. Thank you.